I will be tracking Hurricane Fiona across the western Atlantic through the next few days and also severe weather across portions of the Great Lakes and out west along with flooding rains across the desert southwest and a very interesting storm potentially entering the Gulf of Mexico as we head into next week. What this means for the Gulf of Mexico and Florida all in this video coming up. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another Wednesday morning here on Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. If you guys are new to the channel or have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily important weather forecast updates here on this channel. Looking currently at the satellite imagery of Hurricane Fiona, which is actually a major Hurricane Fiona across the Western Atlantic. You can see very classic hurricane characteristics with this with a very strong eye wall here with convection wrapping right around that. And looking here the next several days, this is going to remain at major hurricane status all the way through the entirety of the week, going all the way into the early portion of this weekend into at least Friday evening, if not Saturday morning, before slowly falling back to a tropical storm as we get into late this weekend as it enters portions there of eastern Canada. So looking at the, in, uh, the intensity guidance with this, it looks to really maintain category three to category four strength all the way through the next 72 to 84 hours, the next several days going into this weekend before quickly kind of falling off back to a tropical storm as we get into the next 96 to 108 hours, which would get into the late this weekend. So definitely a lot of time for this system to con continue to evolve across the Western Atlantic. So let's track this here later on this afternoon. A 951 millibar low is definitely out and not out of the realm of possibility with this here as it moves across the open waters of the Western Atlantic. But as we move into Thursday afternoon, this deepens rapidly to a 937 millibar hurricane, which is a category four as we head into Thursday afternoon. And then this continues to deepen a little further with kind of the winds of this starting to expand a little bit um, to a 936 millibar category four hurricane as we get into pot uh, potentially even Friday before quickly weakening after that as it moves up into eastern Canada. So definitely a very dangerous system here. Probably some rip current risks, some uh, rough surf across the east coast. That will be something to watch here with this storm. Meanwhile, we're talking about severe weather across the Great Lakes. We have a slight risk for severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center here into west central New York. Much of western and northwestern Pennsylvania, north central Ohio, and northeastern Indiana. We we also have a marginal risk extending back into eastern Illinois and also a severe weather threat out west with portions of southern Idaho and northern Utah, including Salt Lake City, under a slight risk later on today as well. So looking at the hazards here, we have two areas of a 15 percent shading for potentially winds that could be over 60 miles per hour. First across the Great Lakes here, this includes places like Buffalo, New York, getting back down towards Pittsburgh there and into the Cleveland and uh, Columbus, Ohio area, and then getting back toward Fort Wayne there in Indiana. Also out west, the Salt Lake City area into southern portions of Idaho, we could also see some damaging winds over 60 miles per hour. The hail risk is going to be a little higher across the Great Lakes, the southern Great Lakes from northern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania into western New York. We could have hailstones up to around half dollar size later on today, and there's also a formidable uh, tornado risk across this area as well, especially northeastern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania, into western New York. We have a 5% shading of a tornado or two developing in this area, and also a large 2% shading getting all the way down here into portions of northwestern Ohio, northeastern Indiana, as well as western New York. So definitely be on high alert across the southern and southeastern Great Lakes as we head into this afternoon for all hazards of severe weather. So let's track that here this morning. We got some scattered showers and storms along that frontal boundary, that cold front dropping south across the uh, Michigan area in the central Great Lakes here this morning. We got some showers and some convective thunderstorms across portions of the South Dakota region, getting into the panhandle of Nebraska and eastern Wyoming. Those should be sub-severe, just some heavy rainmakers, maybe some small hail there. But as we move into this afternoon, peak, t uh, peak daytime heating, we'll start to see kind of a line of showers and storms and maybe even a broken line of storms start to develop across the southern Great Lakes from Indiana over to Ohio into portions there of Pennsylvania and New York State. Some of these storms could be packing a punch with winds over 60 miles per hour up to around half dollar size hail and a couple of tornadoes not out of the realm of possibility. We got some more kind of isolated showers and storms across the center of the country or across the central Great Plains and then back across the west into Utah into southern Idaho there we could be firing up some scattered showers and storms and a few of those could also be severe as well mainly damaging wind gusts across those areas and also some very 
really heavy rainfall and that will continue into the overnight hours and really after midnight with more heavy rainfall out west however the severe weather threat across the great lakes and the northeast will start to wind down at that point and speaking of the desert southwest, we have widespread flood watches across most of the state of Arizona, southern and central portions of Utah, and the northwestern New Mexico, southwestern and western portions of Colorado. This is for an atmospheric river, if you will, of rainfall that it will be moving in as we head through the next 24 to 48 hours. And looking at this afternoon, look at the greens and blues here showing up across much of the desert southwest and the Four Corners region. That is about four times the climatology of, of moisture in the environment so definitely a lot of moisture streaming up from the eastern pacific here and that will continue as we head into thursday and thursday night across this same region here with an atmospheric river of moisture moving in across this area all the way up to the front range of the rockies near denver so definitely a lot of rainfall expected and on the way and looking here through the next 72 hours specifically we could be talking about widespread two to six inches of rain across most of portions there of northeastern and eastern portions of of Arizona, southeastern Utah, getting into much of Colorado and northwestern New Mexico. We could be talking about some heavy rainfall there. And that's where we have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall. Where we could see a widespread flash flooding across this region, a large moderate risk here. One of the largest moderate risks for excessive rainfall I've seen in quite some time. So definitely want to take this seriously if you live in por uh, portions of Utah, Colorado, northwestern New Mexico, into northern and northeastern Arizona, and also a slight risk up here into portions of the Pacific Northwest, into Idaho, and southwestern portions of Montana as well. Looking as you head here into your Thursday, again, another slight risk across portions of Colorado, getting into northwestern um, New Mexico there, and also into western portions of Montana, northern Idaho. We could have some scattered, you know, flash flooding events across those areas as we head into your Thursday. But looking here with that cold front, we're going to see some fall like temperatures bringing in here uh, with, you know, from the south or actually from the north here from Canada all the way south across the Great Lakes into the, new, uh, the northeast as we head into later on today. That is with the strong cold front and that will continue to propagate its way to the south here on your Thursday, just in time for fall equinox on Thursday here, the first full day of fall. And that will continue even into your Friday and beyond. But looking at Wednesday, September 21st here today, widespread highs in the 60s across the Dakotas. Um, portions of Minnesota and the north woods of Wisconsin, all the way back to near the Denver area and even into Montana. Lots of, you know, cooler weather, but definitely see where that cold front is here, extending from portions of southeastern Colorado through the Kansas City region toward the Chicago lakefront, getting just to the north of Detroit. But to the south of there, widespread 90s, if not 100s across places like Memphis, Nashville there, back to the Red River here into Texas, a lot of 100 degree temperatures, probably some record highs later on today. Look at the high temperatures even on Thursday. This front continues to you know make its way farther to the south toward the Ohio River. We have lots of upper 50s to middle 60s for highs across the northern and northeastern United States, particularly particularly around the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. And look at even portions of northwestern Kansas into western Nebraska. Yeah, we could be talking about middle to upper 50s for highs on your Thursday. A big change here from just a couple of days ago with more upper 90s to near 100 across East Texas much of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast and southeastern states as we head into tomorrow. Looking at the pattern from the Climate Prediction Center here, this is their forecast from September 26th through the 30th. Above normal temperatures are favored and likely across the western United States here, mainly west of the Mississippi River, and below normal uh, temperatures are expected east of the Mississippi River there toward the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, and the Great Lakes, where we'll see that trough continue toward the very end of the month of September. Looking here, speaking of that trough and that ridge, we have a large ridge, guys. Look at the spike in the jet stream all the way up here to... Uh, Alaska. That is very impressive here for this time of year, all the way up into portions of central and northern Canada with the jet stream here, and then a big dip here in the jet stream here across the uh, the Great Lakes, the northeast and southeastern Canada, with the trough bringing all that cooler weather to the south as we head here into next week. And speaking of next week as well, we do have some active times, but not across the United States. We have below normal precipitation favored across the majority of the United States 
an exception to portions here of Arizona and across the southeast here, especially into Florida, where we have above normal precipitation. That is our next interesting storm that we need to talk about here. And that has a 90% chance of development here any day now within the next two to five days. The National Hurricane Center giving it a very high probability, almost a certainty to develop here across the eastern and central Caribbean as it pushes here to the west. Looking at it, looking at it here on the visible satellite imagery, we got some kind of disorganized showers and storms right now just to the north here of South America and near the Windward Islands. That'll continue to press its way to the west, and that is that 90% chance of becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm here. And looking at the water temperatures here, guys, we've showed you this many times. Look at all of the waters here in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and the Western Atlantic, well into the 80s, if not near 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely a lot of warm waters for any systems to develop in. And it's really developing in a prime area where we really haven't seen a lot of systems here thus far this year. So that is something to very much consider as we head here into next week. So starting here late this weekend on your Sunday, September 25th, um, looking at the European forecast guidance right now, a 1,004 millibar low is forecast using the European uh, forecast model here just to the south of Cuba here and across the Central Caribbean. Now, as we move into early next week on your Tuesday, the European forecast model strengthens this to a 986 millibar low, which will be a formidable category one hurricane as we move towards portions of Western Cuba. And then as we get toward late week here, it actually makes landfall on the European forecast model across the Florida Keys, um, portions of Naples, Fort Myers, and near the Miami area as a 954 millibar low, which would be probably more like a category two hurricane. So that would be something to watch as we look here at the European forecast model. Now, in comparison to the GFS model, we have a 982 millibar low, a lot stronger of a system to start out here on your Sunday, September 25th. So it will become a lot stronger here. And it also takes it a little farther west, which has more residence time over the waters. Using the GFS model, this strengthens it to a 934 millibar low and actually passes it mainly just between the Yucatan Peninsula there and also western Cuba. So that is important to note. And it, again, it has more residence time on the GFS over the open waters, the very warm waters I just showed you. So it's no surprise the GFS is showing a 929 millibar low across the central and eastern Gulf and passing west of Florida and it kind of has its eyes on Alabama potentially here as we get toward late next week. So, and that would actually strengthen it towards a category four, if not a category five hurricane using the GFS model. So those are still some disparity in the track and the intensity here big time with these, um, you know, operational weather models between the European forecast model and the GFS model. But looking here at the mean, looking kind of at the ensembles, we, we always look at ensembles to kind of see where these systems could go. And really looking at this here, the mean of where the black line is here shows kind of where the median of all these kind of spaghetti plot is of what you call see these lines. And uh, really we see these um, all over the place, but really kind of the middle of this takes it across western Cuba and to western Florida. So that will be something to watch. However, some models here in the ensemble take it a little farther west toward the Yucatan Peninsula and others take it over Cuba and then kind of missing Florida to the east. So there are still some disparity with the track and the intensity with this, but we will continue to track this through the next several days here because this could be a threat to the United States as we head into next week. And speaking of Florida, especially the landfalling hurricane data I was, I was able to retrieve here. Hurricane Andrew back in 1992 had a landfall pressure of 922 millibars. That was a 165 mile per hour hurricane. Hurricane Charlie back in 2004, landfall pressure there of 941 millibars with 150 mile per hour winds. I actually lived through Hurricane Charlie when I did live down in Naples, Florida in 2004 when I was a lot younger. Also Hurricane Irma in 2017, landfall pressure there of 931 millibars with 130 mile per hour winds. And then Hurricane Michael in 2018 with a landfall fall pressure there of 919 and also 160 mile per hour hurricane. Why I bring this up is because all of these hurricanes have something in common and they do are they're all category three or higher. And looking at the one with the asterisk here is Hurricane Charlie, which I did live through, looks to take a similar path, kind of looking at the ensemble data, looking at all of the weather models as a whole. It looks to take po uh, potentially a you know similar path to Hurricane Charlie. So that will be something to note as we kind of look 
forward to kind of some of these analogs and trying to find out where this system could track. And that's what we'll be doing here on this Weather on the Go weather channel to keep you guys safe and ahead of all of the dangerous weather out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video by giving it a thumbs up. Uh, leave any comments, questions, concerns below here about this system or anything weather related. Um, also subscribe to the YouTube channel and also hit the notification bell. It's free to do guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Definitely much appreciated. Stay, stay, stay safe, everybody out there with the flash flooding, the severe weather and hurricane Fiona. Um, stay safe out there. Have a great Wednesday and I'll see you all in the next video.